pressure in the park. It's the most stressful day of the year for dear manager Fizz. With TV celebrities queuing up to show their anti-hunting credentials, we celebrate the bigger names who are pro-hunting. We have news, we have hunting YouTube. Welcome to Field Sports Britain. One job, many offices. Here's professional deer manager Fizz controlling the wild fallow population on a farming and forestry estate. It requires lots of days, lots of outings and small, regular numbers of deer in the larder. At the other end of the spectrum is the job of controlling park deer. That's chalk and cheese. One's like working from home, the other's like working on a production line. Pressurised sort of job today? Yeah, really pressurised. This is the I find the most difficult thing we do in terms of deer management. So sort of 80 odd deer in that group. It's not a job that's an enjoyable job at all. It's a job that has to be done. We have to control the numbers as long as, they, as long as they're within an enclosed area. And it's pretty can be pretty fast and furious. You've got to be very precise with your selection of what animal you want to take. You've got to be absolutely sure of your shot, sure of your backstops. Uh, there's a whole load of things come into it which can makes it a pretty tiring day by the end of the day we're generally feeling pretty worn out to be honest with you. On this Elizabethan estate Fizz and his volunteer stalkers are limited to four days a year to get the number of deer to a sustainable level. Our theory is that coming in less and taking a heavier call gives the deer an easier life rather than having you know one full-time or part-time guy coming in here on a weekly basis taking out one or two which still would put the deer under stress so by coming in here and hitting the hitting it harder for a short period of time we're then able to get out and after today they'll be left in peace right through until october basically september october okay i've got you i see you there great okay cheers bob it's a pressurized few hours yeah, feel free, mate. Crack on and we'll, we'll go and have a look at this lot down by the house there. Especially since the park is huge, it's still open to the public, and at this time of year, the deer don't hide. They choose safety in numbers. Yeah, this time, this time of year particularly, um, now when it, there's obviously all, every, everything's down, cover-wise, the bracken's down, there's you know, absolutely n nothing for these deer to hide in. And what that effectively does, it means that they will deer will they will mob up. We'll have yeah, you might have 100, 200 deer in a group, all moving together, which might sound like it makes it easier to actually manage them, but actually makes it more difficult. Um, it's easier if you can just go and find an isolated one or two and take one out of that. As soon as you've got a big group, anything that spooks them, one shot and the whole lot will be gone. There's a fair few right down the bottom. As you can see, we've got quite a lot of ground to cover. Here, just, I mean, this is just one area of the park, but I spotted a group of deer there, which 491 <laughs> metres down there. So, during the day, we can cover a lot of miles here, just trying to get into a group, and then sometimes they might just turn and gone and be at the other end of the park. To meet the park's requirements, Fizz ideally wants to take 30 deer from here today. All are destined for the table, and the game dealer is ready and waiting to receive a lot of venison this evening. But first, we need to shoot some deer.
we won't see them again. <laughs> Absolute typical, man. Jesus. So you can see we spend a lot of time on these days just trying to locate a group. We've got a group, I reckon there was yeah, about 80 deer in that group. He managed to locate them, stalk where they were initially. It was a really nice position. And then they just, one of them moved out. As we were coming down through here, I think they could just see, see our movement. And it's one at the front, leads the way and the rest have with, gone with it. Um, so it's back to square one. On that, we'll have to go and see, maybe find another group, let that lot settle for a while. A lot of eyeballs, yeah, a lot of eyeballs. We were lucky here because there's quite a lot of undulation in the park, so we can find areas that gives us a really nice, safe shooting. But a lot of it is also pretty flat, and the park is open to the general public. There's a couple of main footpaths through it. There's also a state staff all out at work. Um, these are all things that you've got to factor in. In fact, they're the first things we've got to factor in. The stalkers are all experienced and communication is key. Everyone stands <laughs> down for a few minutes as walkers head through the park. The then the Fizz takes his chance. There are a lot of bodies to choose from. Basically what I went for there is a mature doe, which is really what we're focusing on taking today. Just as obviously the does will throw a fawn this year. So in terms of keeping the population balanced, you have to manage the does. This hoof of this deer has got serious issues there. Um, compare it to the normal side. So that really is a perfect doe to cull out the park. They sometimes get very long, very curled up at the front as well in here, but it's the first time I've actually seen one looking like that. But yeah, I'm glad we got that one out because that won't have been a very comfortable animal at all. Every, every park, every anywhere where it's got an enclosed herd of deer has to do this. They have to go and they have to manage the numbers. Culling with a rifle is, you know, the most efficient way of doing that and um, providing you it's done properly you know, it's as humane as we can make it. And um, ultimately, you know, what we're trying to achieve is a, is a, a nice balance of bucks, does, fawns that are all in really good condition. The next opportunity presents itself at the bottom of the valley. Yeah, well, well, three hours, actually. Oh, nice one, mate. Um, I'm literally down by the bridge. They're sort of heading this way. They're very close to the bridge up on the... Uh, Top fence line. The one that's stepping out. Too many of them. There's too many in amongst the branches, which you know again can't get a. I was looking in the gap at They might come through the other side of the tree. You got to what you, you know. The, the deer, whatever we take has got to be at the back of the group, David, so that because otherwise you know you run the risk of a rick yeah. the the fragmentation off the bullet. There's one at the back now. In the front line. Not it's it's close. It's basically to the right hand side. Oh. On a day like this, it's 101 percent about you know being confident in your kit if you've got any doubt in it uh, you might as well pack up and go home um, and that's really you know the optics the rifle the whole setup um, it's absolutely paramount that you're completely confident with it this is a i was basically in here anything over 
100, 150 meters to have it wound right up to 16. You can see exactly what's going on. You can, if, the, if you have it on a, say a seven or an eight at this kind of distance, which is about 125, 130 meters, it just gets more difficult to identify the difference between a um, doe fawn and a mature doe. And we don't want to shoot any fawns in here today. We just have to mature does to um, regulate the population. So yeah, the kit is really key. The caliber there is a 6XC, which I really like. It's, it's absolutely bang on for this job. Really light recall, very flat shooting, really accurate. This is all about super precision. The doe is another good animal to take. I just looked a bit smaller through the scope, that one is just a little bit thin on the back. So yeah, again, a good one to take out. The obvi obvious deer to take out are any that look like they're ailing. Obviously we'll take them first. Um, and then after that, after that, it's deer that fit the criteria, i.e. today, mature does. In September it would be um, bucks with poor antlers or some of the younger bucks that don't really look like they're gonna come, you know, either body weight wise or antler wise come too much. So um, yeah, but that, that's another good one. Good one to take out for the call today. So yeah, we'll just keep moving on. Fizz freely admits it's one of the most stressful days of the year. He needs to be safe, be considerate, and be really good at his job. Welfare, that's the main thing here. And you know, okay, we shot 20 today, we maybe could have shot 30, but the team of guys, we're all kind of, all see it in the same way. We'd rather come out of here with 20 clean shot animals, um, humanely dispatched and have done a good job than come out with 30 and some of those not been so well dispatched. So yeah, animal welfare really is at the front of the, this project. For more information about Swarovski's optics, go to swarovskioptic.com. Thank you, Fizz. A good professional job well done. And it's Viscount sporting, not Viscount stalking, as we said in that film. Now, Amateur Hour continues at the Field Sports Channel studios with David on the Field Sports Channel news stump. <laughs> This is Field Sports Channel News. The Gold Coast 2018 Commonwealth Games starts next week, the 4th of April. Shooters from across the world will be battling it out at the Belmont Shooting Centre in Brisbane. Look out for the 10 metre air rifle, 10 metre air pistol and skeet finals on Sunday the 8th of April 2018. And shooting events throughout the rest of the week starting on Monday the 9th. Among the Field Sports Channel regulars competing are Aaron Heading and Clay Shooting's golden couple Ed and Abby Ling. You may also recognise shotgunners Matt French, Steve Scott, Amber Hill and multiple medal winner in full ball rifle Parag Patel. England's 20 team members have 22 previous Commonwealth Games medals between them. The UK deer stalking show at Kelso is turning into a popular niche event. It took place last weekend at the Border Union Agricultural Society. Only exhibitors and products related to deer stalking were at the fair, including UK deer track and recovery. Another show on last week was the first London wing shooting fair, held as part of the London fly fishing fair in Islington. Thanks to Al for the Kelso footage. The US has seen marches against gun ownership. Some estimates put the number of people assembled in Washington at 200,000. However, as the UK government did when more than 400,000 people marched to London in favour of fox hunting, the US government is ignoring them. YouTube has changed its guidelines over gun films and ammo films, but not one channel has been terminated. YouTubers have been complaining about the new guidelines and some appear to have received strikes, which means they fall to the bottom of our gun channel ranking. They include this one, Military Arms Channel, plus Big Daddy Hoffman and AK Operators Union. However, channels that had strikes early on in the purge are back to the top of the ranking, such as Iraq veteran 8888. And finally, a fisherman was surprised to open his bag and find something eating his catch. The video is thought to come from Russia and shows that even the frozen fish counter isn't safe from a hungry fox. You are now up to date with Field Sports Channel News. Stalking the stories, fishing for facts. Thank you, David. 
Now we and the shareholders believe it is time to celebrate the big names who hunt. So here they are with music from the 1970s you may recognise if you're as old as me, but the subject matter a little bit more robust. <laughs> Big Hunters, now from the stars of the big screen and current affairs to the big names on YouTube. It's Hunting YouTube. This is Hunting YouTube, which aims to show the best hunting and shooting videos that YouTube has to offer. Dean Lloyd sends me his latest, Insane Fox Hunting Australia, Central South Victoria. He's after foxes and rabbits, as you can probably tell, all set to spaghetti western music. Vukasin Prelevic is Serbian, unlike my pronunciation, which remains British. He is the newest member of the Vilt Jaeger Pro Staff team and sends me this film he has made about fox shooting. Rex Hunter TV comes across a coyote kill and sits out and waits. As he says, the yotes come in like clockwork. The Hunter Brothers are in Swedish Lapland with Agnes Lankau, hunting fishing girl on Instagram, and Gerald and Agnes shoot their first black cocks. To Texas, USA, where Tim Wells' bow hunter shows how deadly a bow can be in tight cover. He kills three fat hogs in a matter of seconds. As he puts it, slock reload, slock reload, and cuss lock. In New Zealand, Ryan Carr takes two lads on a deer hunting adventure to secure a yearling fallow for the freezer. And for goodness sake, they're trying to ban kids from going hunting in Poland at the moment. This film is on the NZ Wild Things channel. Tim Burnett, solo hunter, is after Dusty Desert Rams, a free-range Audad in the desert of West Texas. Audad? If you don't know, now you know. And finally, a hunting season in Germany went out in early February and has so far had more than 70,000 views. Sponsored by Kriegoff and Leica, in English it follows Henrik Lott through an entire season. It's a beautiful film, heavy on the dreamy landscapes, and if we had done it we might have called it Five Months in the Life of Rodeer. That's it for this week, I have put all these films into a playlist for you, click on the i symbol top right or check this film's description. If you have a YouTube film you would like us to pop into the weekly top eight, email me the link charlie at fieldsportschannel.tv. Well, there we go. If you haven't done so already, please pop over to our website fieldsportschannel.tv. You can click to like us there on Facebook, you can follow us on Twitter, you can subscribe to us on YouTube, you can pop your email address to our register page, and you can even invest in us via fieldsportschannel.tv. We'll be back next week. Until then, it's good hunting, good shooting. Good fishing and goodbye. <laughs>